Good morning, everyone. A few of us have joined on the Zoom. That's awesome. So if you're on the Zoom, what we nice. like to do with Business Brew is do introductions. That said, I was just telling Rich before we jumped on this morning that there was something like 40 RSVPs to the LinkedIn event and then a handful to the Facebook event. So we may end up with a big group. So we only have about 15 minutes for introductions and just we got a little bit of a late start this morning. So we really only have about 12 minutes. So what we'll do is if you're on the Zoom right now, you'll get to introduce yourself. I would love to just know who you are and who you're with. And then we'll let Rich at the end introduce himself and uh, we'll fire away. So if you have questions about business development and sales, I'd love to hear those from you. So if you're joining us on Zoom, feel free to raise your hand. You can ask them live or you can use the chat box. If you're joining us on Facebook, you can also use uh, the comment section. I monitor that as well. Uh, so, and if you know Rich personally, text him, ask him his questions by text, make him work for it. So <laughs> All right, let's go. Okay. Uh, my name is Josh. If you don't know me, I know Rich is from the, I mean, we're on, we got the whole country covered here. We're on both sides of the country here. So I'm over in Spokane, Washington. Rich is over in the Philly area. And uh, so if you don't know me, I started Tinderbox Marketing about nine years ago. It's a marketing consultant uh, company here in Spokane, Washington. Uh, and I just love to work with small businesses. Uh, and my mission really is to serve others. Uh, so what I would love to do is I'll just go through my list. So just be ready because my list probably looks different than your list on Zoom. Uh, so Mid, I'm gonna turn it over to you. So if you wanna just unmute yourself, you can tell us who you are and who you're with. Sorry about that. I was pouring myself a cup of coffee. I didn't oh. want to... <laughs> hey, if you um, don't want to hear your video, don't show your video. No, That's okay, no, no. too. Some people That's show right. up in uh, the jammies. Yeah, Mid Mariani. Uh, I'm from a company called NEMR Total HR. We're an outsourced HR company right in South Jersey. I've been with Rich for a while and uh, love to join in. Awesome. Mid, I have only been to the Philly area once, but while I was there, I got to go to Cape May, Jersey. It was yeah. beautiful. Yeah, we just call it Cape May. Yeah. It's, it's it, we, we understand it's New Jersey. So no, <laughs> no yeah, so yeah, we're, I'm real close to Philadelphia where, where I okay. am. Yeah. Awesome. Like, well, thanks for joining great. us. Uh, next on my list is Jason. Good morning, Jason. How are you? Good morning. How are you? I'm good. All right. I'm uh, Jason Ryan. I'm the owner and founder of Omnia Creative Studio, which is a full service digital agency that provides custom website design, search engine optimization, and digital marketing. Uh, I too am located in Southern New Jersey. I'm really good friends with Rich Laster, which is how I ended up here. And just to kind of touch on the Cape May thing, uh, they have an excellent brewery. So if you're into craft beers, check out Cape May Brewing because they are, they have some phenomenal stuff going on. That may or may not have been there when I was there, uh, but we stayed in that really old uh, hotel, the really uh, historic one. Um, so that's, and there was a, I was there for a client with a, for a food show of all things. It was, it was a trip. I, if we have time, I'll tell the story. It was interesting. All right. Uh, thank you, Jason, for joining us. Uh, so glad to have so many people from all over joining us. Uh, next up on my list is Katrina. Uh, Katrina, good morning. How are you? Good morning, Josh. I'm well, thank you. And I hope everyone here is as well. Uh, I'm Katrina Rogers and I work with Josh here in Spokane, Washington. And I, uh, my company is Katrina Rogers Consulting. And what I do is help people change the world with their medicines and medical devices. Awesome. Thank you, Katrina, for joining us. Uh, just real quick before we jump into anyone else. Uh, Will Jacobs, a buddy of mine, he's on Facebook. He's with Barbell Cooking, where we lift and eat well. Uh, so he joined us this morning. He's a culinary education company that teaches fitness people cooking skills. So if, you, if you're one of those people who loves to lift or just loves to be fit, Will's all about eating really healthy while also tasting good. So you're not just eating boiled chicken all the time. So mm. uh, if that's your jam, uh, check out Will. He's on Facebook. Gretchen Renz is also joining us on Facebook. So lots of folks. Uh, okay, so next time, uh, now you're all signing in. It's throwing off my list. I'm going to try to keep this straight. Uh, Andrea, if you want to talk, Andrea Fry is joining us. If you want to introduce yourself, please feel free. Uh, you do not have to share your video if you don't want, but unmute yourself. Tell us who you are, who you're with. All right, so I'm Andrea Fry. I'm with Hill International. I do business development, and we help build um, future infrastructures. Yes, now... 
Uh, I think it's the right Andrea, but we worked together at KXLI, correct? Way back in another Absolutely, life. Absolutely, yes. Oh Our my gosh. Life. Good morning. Good, good so, morning. Uh, good to have you this morning. The old joke in Spokane is that like 30% of Spokane worked at one of the TV stations, which is KXLI. So uh, that's where we met. Good to have you this morning. Yes, and sorry I'm not sharing my video. I'm driving to another meeting. So that's I'm okay. happy this morning. Love to have you. All right. Uh, the second Andrea is on, and I'm not even going to take a stab at that na last name. That would just, that would be embarrassing for the both of us. So I'll let you unmute yourself and uh, go ahead and introduce yourself if you'd like. Hi, I'm Andrea Farkason. I just, I saw the meeting on LinkedIn and just wanted to hear the conversation. Awesome. I work with Cornell University. Oh, thanks for joining us. And that, that last name is much easier to pronounce than the spelling <laughs> suggests. Yes, it's easier than it looks. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hey, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank All right. You. So trying to keep things straight, I think I have uh, Kirsten next. Yeah. It's, hi. It's, it's Kirsten. Kirsten. Yeah, Kirsten. It's Kirsten. Oh, you know, I, I like, like to a... tell people it's, it's like beer. Since somebody mentioned Cape May Brewing, it's like beer with a K. Awesome. So people don't tend to forget how to say Kirsten if they're thinking about beer with a kid, which is fine. Yeah. Um, so I think I might be the biggest nerd in the group. So I'm Kirsten Toller. I am a CPA and I have my own uh, consulting practice, KMT Consulting. I am a tax advisor and I work predominantly with small to mid-sized business owners. Yes, Rich. Um, Rich is one of my favorite human beings on the planet and it is my pleasure to be here and support him and, and meet everybody. Oh, that's so great. I love that he brought his own fan base. That's excellent. Oh, and I, I also am from uh, the South Jersey area right outside of Philly. So go oh, It's more of a, more of awesome. a family than a fan base. More of a family. Okay. Far, it, is. You know. it is. I love it. All right. Well, uh, that's it for those of us who are joining us on Zoom so far this morning. As other people spill in, we'll see if we can't let them introduce themselves. But uh, just if you're new to Business Brew, uh, this was something that we used to do in person at a co-working space in downtown Spokane, uh, and it was designed to do about a half hour of just mingle, have coffee, meet some people, and then after that half hour, we would sit and do the same thing we're going to do this morning, which is have a conversation with an expert. In that situation, we would be in a big circle, and we would just go around the room, and then we would end on our guest, and that today is Rich. So Rich, what I would love is you can spend as much time as you want, hopefully not the whole hour, but introduce us, let us know who you are, why we should be paying attention to you and, and what you're doing these days. Hey, how's everybody doing out there? Uh, I'm Rich Laster. I am a lover of people, preferably good people. Um, started my career 22 years ago, 23 years ago at First Union Bank, uh, went into banking. Basically, the common thread throughout my career from banking to financing for small businesses to consulting for small businesses has been sales. Um, I am extremely good at it. Didn't really know why I was good at it when I was young, because I was like a little different. The, oh my God, let's close a deal. Ooh, wasn't me. It was like, okay, well, this person needs this. Well, this product service lines up with their need. I can help them this way. So now we are finding that the world is catching up with that. The, 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 the style and the art of communicating the value of the product or service. So now all of a sudden I am a sales guru and God. Lowercase g, and very important to note that. Um, Temple University graduate, Philly hometown boy, uh, very close to South Jersey, which is why so many of my friends are in South Jersey, and I love them all. All right, uh, Jason, that beard is serious as hell. I love you, bro. Um, just, you know, I'm here to help. I help businesses, new businesses go to market. Uh, existing businesses, I help them turn around underperforming sales results. I help them address the taking of market of new products or services, but all based on and driven by their value proposition, like where and how are you helping? And if there isn't one, or if there's a weak one, then we have to work on that. And I am not a stranger to having dirt under these nails, working with entrepreneurs, helping them grow. Oh, that's... I'm also, I am also, I'm sorry. I'm also a cigar enthusiast and a grandpa. And to my grandson, AJ out there, ho, ho, 
Paw Patrol. All oh, right. That's... <laughs> Just in case he's watching, you know, that's my guy. I got to shout out Paw Patrol for him. Yeah, you got to. Uh, that's great. You, you already talked, you know, quite a bit about some of the things that we're going to hit on. But I think before we go too much further, uh, what I'd like to do first, I'm going to acknowledge those of uh, those who joined. So we had a couple of new people join uh, on the, the Zoom. We had Greta and Cindy. Greta and Cindy, we've already done introductions, but if, you, if you'd like, use the chat. Tell us who you are. Uh, let us know what you're doing and um, who you're with. Feel free to include also any of you on the Zoom or on Facebook. This is already happening on the Facebook, by the way. Give us your contact information. Let us know who you are, how to get in touch with you. Uh, so if you need a CPA and you're cool working remotely, or if you're in the South Jersey, Philly area and you need a CPA, you can obviously reach out to uh, Kirsten. But if you need any of the other services that folks provide, obviously this is a little bit networking. So use the chat robustly. Uh, if you want to see what's going on on Facebook, you can also jump on there. So Rich, before we get too much further, will you tell me, will you define sales for me? So I do this little game. When I first meet with a business, I have them answer a questionnaire. And in there, I ask them to give me their definition of marketing, advertising, and sales. They always have the same definition, almost always, for marketing and advertising. So they're not clear what the differences between those two are. And really, the difference is advertising is when you pay for it, and marketing is everything else. And then they, the sales, I get some of the most fascinating answers. So would you do me a favor and just walk me through your definition of sales so that we're all speaking the same language for at least the next hour. Mm. I, I love that question. So for the purposes of this conversation, so that all of you walk away being better at it, sales is converting qualified leads and prospects into clients. It's the process of converting leads and prospects into clients. If I complicate it, you're not going to understand it. It's going to be like, okay, this guy is speaking jargon. Uh, I'm going to log off. Conversion is what sales is all about. Marketing, that's Josh's world, right? That's about getting your message out there. That's about communicating outward and creating tools and systems that communicate and drive traffic inward inbound and outbound marketing um advertising as he said that's when you pay for it sales is converting the leads that come from all of that the prospects that come from all of that into clients or customers that's great so i want to just take a moment if you are operating in the digital space right e-commerce or whatever, it's the same concept. It's taking all those people that you spent effort and energy and maybe money driving them to your website to buy or driving them to Amazon to buy. It's when those people click buy. It's the same thing, it's a conversion. It's taking somebody who was interested, whether it was like Rich said, a qualified lead or prospect, and we're gonna have to talk about those two things now, uh, and converting them into a client or somebody who is qualified on your website they got there because you have something they want and then they bought it's that conversion and that's where a lot of people get confused right so sales is the transaction that's it okay so walk me through now we have to know what's what's a lead what's a prospect and and what makes them qualified that's such a great question <laughs> so um a sales funnel is where all of these people, these contacts, these leads go through the stages uh, from educating them to interacting with them to discerning that one, they are looking for what you're offering and two, they can A, afford it and actually put it to use. They wind up in your pipeline. In your pipeline, they are a qualified lead. You know that they can pay you. They know that they need you, right? There, there, is, we, there is a win-win. There is a, a synergy. It's, it's zen, zen happening here, right? A qualified lead is somebody who understands and recognizes that they value what you're offering, 
right? Value, value. Um, a lot of entrepreneurs get into business to make money. Um, those entrepreneurs are more likely to fail than those who get into business to add a value to this world that we live in, to the marketplace that they say they want to serve, to the people that they say they want to help, help. Put your money where your mouth is, help. And that eliminates, especially in the tech community, there is this stigma. There's like sales is the scarlet letter, right? Oh my God, the sales guy. Oh my God, he's going to sell me a used car. No, no. He's going to communicate the value that your tech, your hardware, your software, that it, that it represents to that buyer. And if, he, if you're, not, you're not clear on your value proposition, if, if you're not clear on how you help, what the heck, man, come on, man. Then you're in the red ocean. If you've ever read Blue Ocean Strategy, right? If you know how you help and, and, and you bring a value, you bring a, a, a quality of experience that nobody else is doing, you're in a blue ocean. Go out there and help as many people as you can. Then it's not a sale. Your mindset is on helping. That is what makes sales simple and easy. And in this post-pandemic world, I don't know, are we still post? Whatever. In this post-pandemic world, that is everything that people, people are hypersensitive. They're, they're hyper-emotional. Oh my God. Uh, uh. Like they don't want to be sold anything. Nobody wants to be closed. But if you are helping them, I promise you have a better chance of either making a deal or building a relationship that may turn into referrals even if they don't buy from you. So it comes back to what we talked about earlier. I love everybody, but preferably good people. Be a good person. Do some good, right? Don't, don't go out there trying to close them. Yeah, you got goals. Yes, you need to hit them. Then you need to exceed them. A goal that you're not exceeding is, is it's what? It's, it's a bar you're happy to have reached at all. That sucks. Come on. Exceed it. Mamba mentality. Kobe's dead. But the mentality, the, 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 the evidence of his mindset of I can be better tomorrow than I am today. And taking that attitude to every day that God blesses you to wake up. Let's go. Oh man, Rich is fired up. Sorry, I'm no, just, don't don't be look, sorry. It's, it's great. Sales is not about selling. I don't I don't want you out there selling. I want you out there helping. There each and every one of you, man. Come on. Six minutes in, and I have there's so much to dig into here. All right, so. We talked about the sales funnel. I put a link both in the chat here on Zoom and on Facebook. If you're interested in what that means, basically the top of the funnel is everybody in the world. And then as you work through marketing and or advertising and then relationship building and helping people, they get closer down the funnel. When they get to the bottom of the funnel, that's when they become a qualified leader prospect. And then the, the end of the funnel is that, that, that decision, right? So you talked about value proposition in my brain, whenever I hear value proposition, as a marketer, I'm always thinking mission. And if I heard you right, what you're saying is the people who are mission driven, who have a good value proposition, are going to be the best at sales. So can, do you have any tips and wisdom on how to create that, how to define my value proposition, how to figure out what my mission is? So that's a good question. You're asking great questions today. All right, Josh, I love it. So one thing I've learned from friends and mentors in the venture capital community is that business plans are a thing of the past, right? You need a business plan if you are going to a bank for $500,000 or more, right? Um, otherwise, you need, and Josh is on backup today. This is awesome. He gave you that article. So we're going to ask Josh to give you another article. It's the business model canvas. A business model canvas is, and he's going to get his, I, yes, 
Yes. You see that? This man is ready. All right. This is, we're a great team. Batman and Robin. No, we're not going to tell you who's who. Um, I didn't know this was going to come up. I just have it living behind me at all times. (laughs) Always. Always. So when you look at the business model canvas, what drives you to being able to fill in those blocks is understanding the pains that the person you say you're building this business to help the pains they're having that you can address, right? Or the things that they're lusting after, the things they want, their desires. Let me not say lust. I don't want to offend anybody, right? I don't want to get anybody, you know, let's calm down, folks. All right. Um, The things they desire, the things they want or need in their business, um, in their lives, uh, they are chief marketing officer. And for some reason, there's no chief sales officer. So they are challenged to address and increase sales revenue. Well, they, they, they need growexpand.com. There's a business and they're finally getting some traction. Numbers and revenue is growing. And what they need most is Kirsten. Like, yo, somebody come in here and get my, get my numbers right. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing. Take this Excel spreadsheet and fix my life. You know, like, <laughs> and she's laughing. That must happen often. You know, like, it's, man, listen, your value proposition and, and mission is very much aligned. Like, they're, they're, they're pretty synonymous, right? Your value proposition is how you propose to add value to the lives you touch, right? How your product is in the middle of your wallet and the people that need your help, right? So once again, move your wallet out of this. You're gonna make money if you're actually out there helping people. Now, yes, by all means, and this is something my godfather, Bill Jolly, Uh, music producer here in Philadelphia. Um, He taught me a long time ago. He said, you know, the problem with being a nice guy is that you're going to need protection from the people that would take advantage of you. And the way you do that is by building a business around yourself. So I can love you all day. And, and, you know, you can, oh yeah, you know, uh, you know, I need to hook up with your services. I really, oh, okay. Well, you know, the process is this. The fee is this, uh, but definitely, I'm sure I can help you. Hmm. Yeah, you know, this isn't Fast Eddie's. Like, I'm not selling cheesesteaks out the back of my office. Like, you know, bargains and deals. Eh, sure, they can be negotiated sometimes. You know, we'll turn the product from a package into an a la carte offering, and you know, I know Omnia Creative has to do that all the time when they're building websites, when they're building apps and things out for clients, like. Oh, okay. Well, my, my fee is 10000 Oh, you can afford six. Okay, well, let's look at what that can get you. And let's go. Because if you are adding value, if you are really focused on helping and driving results for the lives you touch, I don't want you getting shortchanged. Please don't do that. So Rich, to back up to the to business model canvas. Uh, I've sent <clears throat> links for, for the business model canvas. Well, it's a website called strategizer. It's a good one. Uh, there's also, yeah. I like the, the version called the lean canvas and, but both are going to help you work on your value proposition by first also starting with, uh, who's the customer, which we're going to probably talk a ton about and what problems do you through your product or service solve for them? So that's the other thing, right? So value and mission are wonderful and you need to have those, but you also need to have that empathy for your customer and understand what problems are you solving for them? Otherwise, how do you expect to build relationship? How do you expect to communicate value um, and your mission when at the end of the day, they, they A, don't know what you're selling or B, how it's going to improve their situation, right? Right. So I love the business model canvas for that. Um, All right, Rich. So there's this thing that happens in the sales environment uh, or the, the entrepreneurship small business community where uh, we throw around terms. They all mean the same thing. 
but we we love to change things. So you know, it's, right. it used to be you know <laughs> like your audience. Now it's your target market, or maybe it's your customer. All these things are all synonyms, right? Mm-hmm. The big one in sales is to never call it sales, but to call it business development. Is there a difference? Do we care? Oh, there's a difference. So let's talk about that. Oh, that's um, that's a great question. So <laughs> I got into sales consulting from doing business development. Business development is how do I how do I say this in as few words as possible? I'll give examples. There you go. My gray beard was kicking in there for a second. Um, So sales is converting an opportunity into a deal, a client, a customer. Business development is the art of effectively working the entire sales funnel from that is the company that we want to do business with to identifying them on LinkedIn, stopping by their office, um, you know, hey, uh, we'd love to get to know you and your business, what you're doing, et cetera. Want to grab lunch, my dime. You know, um, business development is solely focused on the hunt. It's a long sales cycle. It is typically... I typically do it for my B2G clients, people going after government contracts um, and need to use my relationships in DC. Uh, The typical business development relationship looks like a small monthly retainer just to compensate train tickets, cell phone bills, lunches, et cetera, um, and a commission on the back end um, as a result of helping them win a contract with XYZ government agency. It's a very, it's a, business development is much harder than sales. And yes, I mean, Josh, you you know my work. You seem to understand my world very well, right? Uh, They are often interchanged and they are not, right? So when we hear of the chief business development officer, you most people will think sales what you should think is the guy who builds manages develops maintains and then monetizes relationships on behalf of the corporation company llc whatever your your entity type is for entity types and accounting questions called kirsten um yeah, it's it's very different. It's very different. Business development is focused on longer sales cycle opportunities. Uh, sales is too at times, but the the hunt of long sales cycle opportunities is what business development is. So if I'm hearing you right, and I think mm-hmm. I am, should sales or the bigger umbrella business development play nice with marketing and advertising because it sounds like they're pretty connected to me can i answer you like from bizarro world if sales and marketing don't play nice you're not gonna get all the milk from the cow like sales and marketing in my opinion are like I I used to say cousins, but now I think I want to say twins, right? You know, they're they're twins. Like, and let's take, for example, Josh and I. I can, I'm very good at building relationships because I love people. I'm very good at converting those relationships into deals because that's just how my mind works. Seeing how to monetize something seeing where things can go. I grew up playing puzzles and playing with Lego blocks. But when it comes to, and and earlier this year, I did this with Josh, a full marketing audit of my firm. Um, When it comes to how to communicate the message 
and messaging and like those things that are in marketing's wheelhouse, I, look, sometimes you, you have to know when to turn to an expert. Now, I'll use my car as a great example. I can fix my brakes. I can change my oil. And then I need help. <laughs> right? Like some things you go to an expert for. So when it comes to strategizing how to monetize your product or service, okay, that's me. But what needs to be said and what I'll be transparent about is part of the go-to-market strategies and the sales turnaround strategies that I do have marketing involved because there's a market research component that I need in there to really fully understand who your ideal client profile is, buyer persona, whatever, whatever name we're using today as Josh said, right? Um, but yes, yes, marketing and sales really should be best friends and they are not the same. Uh, I just want to take a minute to point out something Andrea said. She said, huge pet peeve, people thinking sales and business development are the same. It's like fingernails on a chalkboard when people think sales, marketing, communications, and business development are Amen, all the same. Andrea. Truly appreciate you deliberately defining the difference between each. And and you're, I think you're spot on. I love that saying, you won't get all the milk out of the cow. I always you say won't. that advertising sales and marketing, and you could even say advertising sales and the bigger picture business development are all gears in a machine. And if they're not spinning in the right direction, you're right. not going to get the results you want. Because you could have the best marketing and advertising platform in the world, but if your sales team or you personally stink at sales, it yeah. doesn't matter how many people you drive down the funnel. And the reverse is true. I know people who are really good at sales, but their marketing and advertising stink. So they don't have anybody to sell to. So right. You've got to be working all three. And that's a perfect segue to one of my next questions. So I work with, and I don't know where you are, but I work with a ton of owner operators, right? People who are good at something, who turn it into a business, who wear a bunch of hats. And I can't tell you how often I hear, I hate doing sales. What happens if that's me? And how do you work with that person? How dare they? <laughs> First of all, um, any, any owner operator who says they hate doing sales doesn't really have a firm grasp on their business, in my opinion. And that's okay, because we all have to start somewhere. To say I hate doing sales is to say that I hate the idea of all the work that I'm so great at turning into money so that I can feed my family and pay my bills. No. No, you love sales. What they hate is the mindset that they have about sales, the, the thought process that they have around sales. When they hear sales, they think of the guy that they knew as a kid when they went to the car dealership with mom and that guy took advantage and was really cheesy and sleazy, right? They, in their mind, that's a sales guy right? The, the, the appliance store in the alley behind your favorite supermarket, <laughs> that's not a sales guy. There's a difference, and, and, and Josh and I have had this conversation before. I'll share it with everybody. There is a big difference between hustling and doing business. Hustling, you are like, in reaction mode you are hungry but you are in reaction mode you are clawing and gnawing at any opportunity you can get your hands on and you know there will be carnage and blood and you will eat and tomorrow you will be hungry again because you haven't really thought this out you're hustling you're you're, you're running after it you're scrambling and and guess what we have all been there and a lot of great businesses have started there. The transition you need to make is to say, okay, I'm great at this. What do I need to better communicate what I do so that I can start to afford to take some of these hats off? 
is my pricing correct, right? Am I positioning myself? Now I'm talking marketing. Am I positioning myself correctly, right? Who am I really centered on helping? Am I talking to them? Where are they? How do I get there? And how do I help them? More than ever, 2021 and the years to come, nobody wants to be sold. I'll say that a million times more. I know you heard me say that a half hour ago. Nobody wants to be sold. Where they are is where you need to be and you need to be empowering them and educating them towards the solution that you offer. Because if they're talking to you, they have a problem that you can fix. Okay, so the owner operator who says I hate sales doesn't understand business yet. And that's okay. But if they're gonna grow, they better get a grasp on the fact that sales is the conversion of that product or that service that you offer into money. Marketing makes the person aware. Advertising is the cousin that marketing sends out to find you to make you aware, right? That's, that's cousin ad. Yeah, hey, cuz, all right. But sales is when what you offer, the value in it is recognized and it turns into money. So that's for the owner operator. Owner operator, I say that, right? Get back to helping. You're hungry, your spouse is mad at you because what? The light bill's late? Don't know. Get a part-time job, drive Uber at night. I don't, I, don't, I don't care what you do. Pay the bills, pay the bills. But this passion that was put in your heart, you have to see that through. It's not a dream. In order to dream, you have to be in what state? asleep. Wake up, write that beautiful dream you had down. And then I want you to map out the steps it's going to take for you to make that beautiful dream happen. Wake up, take that dream and build it into something massive. Thinking small will get you what? If you aim it, I, I won't even I won't even go there. Magic Johnson said it better than I ever could two years ago in an interview after being criticized for not investing in a very small deal that a new member of the NBA brought to him. And Magic Johnson said, the same energy it takes to make a thousand dollars is what it takes to make a million dollars. It's all about your focus. How big. Are you focusing? How high? How, what, what, what? Come on! You got this. What are you? What, what are you scared of? You're scared of sales. You don't like the word. All right, call it. Call it. Call it anything else. Call it helping. How about that? Let's all walk away and like when we think sales, let's translate that into helping, helping people who need what I offer buy it and have better qualities of life. Just don't call it business development or it's fingernails on a chalkboard, oh, right? Man, if you call it business development, then uh, you know, you might not, yeah. Okay, so <laughs> I just, I wanna take a minute. If you're on Zoom, you've gotta be watching the chat. There's a ton of value coming in through the chat. Karina jumped in, or Katrina jumped in and said, hire the professionals you need to save time and energy for your highest value. Jason said something that I really appreciate is I don't hate sales, but I don't want to be called a salesperson. And, and Rich, I think you touched on that a little bit, but that's that stigma that we have. We all think about that used car salesperson. Mm -hmm. You said the, the, the appliance place that so we all think about that wheel and deal hustler that we don't want to associate with. And that's probably where the stigma comes from but yeah. it's, and that fear, but it's also probably mm -hmm. where this attachment to terms like business development come from, because we're willing to call it anything else. We just don't want to call it sales. So I like that you said, let's call it helping. Because if you think about it, like, I'm just going to help you. 
that's so much different. And, and, and Kirsten also said, you know, sales has that stigma attached. And she said, find that organic way to share what you do to monetize it. And it feels better than partnering with, or feels better. And then partnering with a good strategist like Rich is so important. So please be paying attention to the comments. If you're on Zoom or on the Facebook feed, I am doing my best to copy and paste them over because the conversation is so good, but I'm not getting all of them. Uh, you know, I like what Greta said. Most companies don't realize that without sales, there's not a company. And that's true. I always say that there are people who are really great at baking cupcakes and really bad at selling them. And really what it was, they got into it because they had this passion for this thing, but all the other stuff makes them uncomfortable or they don't have the skill set because a lot of people started a business and they didn't go to, you know, school for marketing or school for, uh, you know, they don't have their MBA and they don't have these tools. So Rich, you're, you're giving out all this wisdom. And one of the things that you just said that I really like is that marketing makes you aware. Advertising is the cousin that goes out and finds the customer. That's the paid piece. And then, it all, and then at that point, sales is just, did you provide value? Did you educate them on what you're doing? And then did you convert them? And I think let's talk about that part because if we do our job right, if we're marketing, if maybe we're advertising, maybe it's not in the budget yet, but we, we're aware of what it means. Right. And people are calling us or they're emailing us or they're, or they're reaching out to us. And now we're in that position where we have to convert, otherwise known as the close. Let's talk mm. about that. What are some of your tips for that? So we don't feel like, yes. Jason, we don't feel like some of these people are, are communicating that we feel good about it. We don't feel like we just hustled and tomorrow we're going to be hungry again. Uh, so always be closing is a, a mindset I don't want you to adopt. I, I keep saying helping because I know, I know about the stigma that sales carries, right? So the close, the conversion, the final stop on this beautiful sales funnel where we uncover the objections and the questions that the qualified lead or prospect has is where you use these two ears and this mouth proportionately. You want to ask open-ended questions. You want to confirm that they have a need for what you're offering. Right, you want to confirm what you've heard about what their pain point and what their need is. Then you want to discuss with them and get buy-in from them that what you're offering actually addresses the challenge that they're having. Okay, all of this sounds warm and fuzzy, right? All of this is more about what they're dealing with, what they need, what they want how you can help. They're doing all of the talking. You're leading that conversation. You're encouraging that conversation. You're not talking about price. So rule number one, if you're taking notes, the minute you talk price, you jump out of the blue ocean and you are in the deep red ocean and the sharks are devouring you. Uh, negotiating on price is a losing battle unless for some reason, and I've never seen this with a small business, for some reason your cost of goods sold is lower than your much larger, much more established competitors, and you can offer a low price. <laughs> Does that even make sense? I don't believe I even just asked that question. Like, <laughs> listen, don't argue price. Drive value. If you have done um, the sales process well. They understand the value. They're comfortable with you. You didn't come off like a jerk. Um, you're, they, you're really focused on helping. People are going to feel that. That is rare in the sales world. I, I don't know why, um, but it is, right? Um, people feel when you actually want to help, which is why I'm, I'm very good at what I do. And it's not about what this is going to cost. It's like, okay, let's go. Okay, so you want to confirm what their need or their want is. You want to get 
them to say, you wanna hear them say through open-ended questions that what you're offering really does address that problem. You wanna to get to know as quickly as possible. You wanna find out what they think your product or service could do better or how it could be better, right? You wanna speak on that immediately to address that no, to address that objection. And then you wanna ask them if today is the day that they wanna make that need fulfilled. Who doesn't want their needs fulfilled today? Don't you want your needs fulfilled today? I would like a slice of tiramisu. I'm going to go get some tiramisu. I'm about 25 minutes from South Philly. I'm good. It's on. I want my needs, which is really a want, but the client never calls their wants a want. It's what they need because in their head, they need it. Call it what you want. I'm here to help. And you're here to help. That's how you close from now on. I don't want you talking price. The price is the price. Now, if you know you have wiggle room and they push back on price, you push back. Well, I don't know. This is a little much. Okay. But this is what you need. And I'm the best person to provide it to you. Do you want to take it apart and look at it from an a la carte? Like, you, you, you want to look at the widgets and see which widget you want us to take out of this car? Not sure it'll still stop on a dime, but we can take the brakes out. Wait, the suspension. You don't need the suspension. There are no potholes in the town you live in. No problem. Your product or service is something that is on your heart. It's a product of the passion inside of you that can impact the marketplace. If you've developed your pricing to cover your cost of goods sold, your desired profits, right? The operation of the business. If, if you have built this thing correctly, you've done the work, you've done the research, you've gotten the help that you needed to address or to deal with the things that you don't know. Then when people push back on price, you get to push right back. Now, if you just came up with this, you're in hustle mode, you came up with this business, this product, this service, and it's really off the cuff, right? You, you threw a price on it because that's the price everybody else is offering. You don't know if you're making a profit or not. <sighs> I, I don't know. You got some homework to do. Visit strategizer.com and uh, get a business model canvas and work through your idea a little better. And that's not criticism. That is free help. If you are in hustle mode, and you want to actually be in business mode because your beard's getting a little grayer. You know, your hairstylist has been hiding those gray streaks now and, and, and you're about to just embrace it, right? Because gray looks good. I embrace it, right? You're at a point where you don't have the 14 or 16 or 18 hours a day to hustle like you did when you were young. You don't have that kind of energy anymore. You need to do it smarter, bigger, and better. Business Model Canvas is what every private equity firm, every venture capital firm that you go to with a half-assed deal is going to tell you to do. So just do it now. Tighten up this model. Tighten up this business that you, uh, you're taking to the world. Yeah. So I, Jason just jumped in and said, people who ask for price, I give it to them because I have learned that it helps determine who the time wasters are from those who are serious about their needs. Uh, it's helped his process tenfold. So he just gets out. If they ask, he tells them, and that's part of his process. And I would say that, you know, Rich's mm -hmm. advice today has been invaluable, but 
you've got to figure out how to make it work for your business model and, and the right. clients that you're serving. And if you're, you're seeing a lot of tire kickers, one, I would tell you, we probably need to tweak our marketing, right? If we're getting a ton of tire kickers who aren't serious and price is where they turn. Um, but Jason, I do the same thing. I have a questionnaire and I can tell right from the questionnaire where they're at, right? If they don't fill right. it out, that's the first thing. If they're not willing to take five minutes to fill out a marketing questionnaire, they're not ready to hire a marketing person. Right? right. And that's great. But they're not at the qualified lead stage. If right. They're exactly. still kicking tires. Right. Yeah. They're, so you they're gotta, shoppers. Yeah. You got to figure out if they're price shopping and that's right. not, you're not, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. And, and I was going to say, Rich, you're, you're so spot on with this whole pricing thing. And it really boils down to if you don't respect your pricing, who is right? You've got to respect the pricing you came up with and not right. allow people. To, I know so many people who run their own business who basically work for free. If they, if they put in the hours that they put in per client as a service-based model, they're working for free. They're losing money, right. but they don't see right. it that way. So you got to respect your own pricing. Otherwise, like who else is? Now, that doesn't mean your pricing's correct. There's always room to look at your model and figure it out. All right. So I just want to, we've, we've talked a ton about, you know, everything, but I want to know, let's do, uh, three, maybe five, however many you think, but Rich, tell me some of your, like the biggest mistakes you've seen. And then we'll follow that up with some of like the best practices that you've seen. But I want to know, like, what are some of the pitfalls that we can avoid if, if we're finding ourselves needing to tweak our sales process? Oh, there's a gem in that question. Sales process. Mistake number one, get one. Develop a sales process. <laughs> That's mistake number one that small businesses, startups, entrepreneurs make. Understand what the process looks like for you, right? For you. What does the process look like for you from the time somebody clicks on your Instagram, winds up on your website, right? Is that data being fed into your CRM? Do you have Google Analytics running, right? Are, are you collecting, right? Are, are you getting intel on who's visiting your website? Who's visiting your, your social media, your blog, right? From there, are these people going into a CRM? Are there steps before they get to your CRM? right? On your website, does it sound very technically uh, heavy? Like, well, we, uh, we service a 322 widget and uh, only the 322 widget is in the widget for the widgets of the widget to 222229. Two, 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 Come on, wait, 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 wait. I just lost myself in trying to make up that analogy. <laughs> like, what the heck is going on? Listen, you want to make sure that you are communicating clearly, but specifically to the people who are your ideal customer, right? So if you know that people who hire you are always over 40, 70% of the time, they're men. They are 60% of the time ego-driven. You know, it's okay. Listen, Josh, you know this. Like, <laughs> ego-driven borrowers, buyers, clients, you, you deal with them differently, right? As consultants, Josh and every other consultant on here can speak to this. As consultants, right? clients who are men, there is a different manner in which you deal with your male clients, right? We're, we're shooting, the, shooting the proverbial a little bit, but it's still about building the relationship, doing business and getting it done. Um, coachability comes after likability. You have to, you, so you have to know, <laughs> man, listen, so one, because uh, I'm, I'm about to go down a rabbit hole here. I'm, I'm about to start preaching. I'm going to have y'all pulling out Bibles and, and whatever faith you are. Listen, 
Um, one, have a sales process. Discern from the transactions and the clients you have in those relationships, discern what it looks like from the time somebody finds out that you exist to the time they become a client. You need to understand that process too. Number two mistake, you need a CRM. You need it now. If you don't have budget for it, if you're a startup, if you're making less than 100,000 a year in your business, right? Get HubSpot, which is like free, right? <laughs> Just say use a spreadsheet, whatever you have to do, okay? Um, but you have to be managing the experience of the people who are visiting your website, who are visiting your blog. You have to be tracking what these people are clicking on, what they're looking for, what kind of information is it, you know, and who are they, right? Okay, that, that's another rabbit hole. Suffice to say, you need a CRM. If nothing more, <laughs> to judge this point, if nothing more, you need a spreadsheet. Okay, click on website this date. Okay, ask the question this date. Their question was, bang. Our answer was, right? Build a relationship. Education and empowerment are very big keys to any sale, successful sales process. You wanna be doing as much of it as possible, right? You, but you wanna be authentic. If I'm not a writer, right? So I have a YouTube channel because it's easier for me to cut out 15 or 30 minutes, sit down. I'll make a couple notes before I do them, right? But sit down and talk through a topic, talk through a problem and help people get to solution. It's easier for me to do this than, like that's just, it's just, it's, it's not my leaning. I have the skill set. I'm a graduate of Temple University. Of course I can write a paper. But, you know, thank God I graduated. Like, I don't want to write any more papers. <laughs> Can I hire somebody to write, write papers for me? Like, they're out there, I'm sure, right? Um, you you want to be authentic. So one, have a sales process. Two, you need a CRM. Three, be yourself. Be authentic. Keep in mind, if you got to get it tattooed, on your arm. Keep in mind why you started this business. And, and be real about the why. If it's, I hate working for other people, I want to like, get it right there. I hate working for other people. There we go. BLBC. All right, Prince, you got to chime. Put it in the chat. What's that mean? Right? You, be real so that you always remember why you're working 14 hour days for yourself. Why when it's stressful, why when Kirsten tells you that you know your last accountant screwed up and she has to help you through an audit now. Why, why this is like label brewing company. <laughs> you got porters and stouts? All right, all right. Check out Black Label Brewing Company. Um, why'd you Why'd you start it? But you You gotta You gotta be real because the distractions are massive and plentiful, right? There's always going to be something that takes you down another path. Remembering who you are authentically, just naturally, natural, real you. And being that, and you know, I, honestly, you recognize character flaws in yourself, get a therapist, right? Seriously, best thing I've ever done. 
get a therapist. Okay. No character flaws. You just lack the motivation and the self-discipline. Get a life coach. Okay. Because if you're serious, if you're serious, you uh, prove it. You have to prove it. You don't have to prove it to anyone but yourself. Kobe Bryant never woke up and said, you know what? This is for the fans. No, this is for the devil. Nah, I'm going to say it was an angel. This is for the angel on his shoulder that's like, we can be better than we were yesterday. And every day waking up believing that. Training, studying, preparing. Josh and I both know about the business model canvas. Both of us can literally put our hands on. And I have my virtual background up so you can't see mine. But we can vir- literally both put our hands on our business model canvas. Neither of us are venture capitalists. Neither of us work for private equity firms. We learned what we had to learn to do what we do a little better, right? And the beauty of the business model canvas, and I'm going to turn my virtual background off. All right, I got a Slack message from a client. Close. Turn this virtual off for a second so you can actually see. All right, so there's mine, right? And that's my value proposition worksheet, right? The, the benefit, the benefit of having your business model canvas in arm's reach, you notice Josh and I both were able to grab our business model canvas. Why am I in business? Okay, how did I say I want to deal with XYZ problem, right? What are my channels, right? Okay, I'm a little weak in this area. You don't have downtime. Your favorite TV show? Oh, (laughs) you have one of those? You're not reading books? You're, you're You're not getting smarter? You're not getting stronger? I'm not asking you to join Planet Fitness, right? But that's good for your body if you need to work out, exercise, and stay healthy. I'm asking you to join Planet Win. Join Planet Mamba, baby. Right? Go hard for what you say you want. Get better. The biggest mistake. All right, scratch number one, because number one was get a sales process. That's number two now. That's number two now. And 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 get a CRM was number two. That's number three now. And be authentic was number three. That's number four now. Prove it to yourself. Do the work and get better at the work every day. That's number one. What you say you're all about, that's cute. Post it on Facebook. Somebody will believe you. You won't. You know it's bull crap. You wake up with you every day. You live with you every day. Make yourself a better person. Make yourself smarter, make yourself stronger. And if you know darn well it's something you're not good at, outsource it. I don't need to be the person helping you to point you in the direction of the person that can help you. Take that attitude. They're not your client. Okay, help them find what they need though. And, and, and get serious about it. It's so cute, right? We live in this day and this time where we everybody has a voice. Well, what the heck are you saying? Are you saying something? Is it worth hearing? Is it worth hearing? That's sales. Knowing when to shut up until you have something worth saying something they need to hear. 
and then serving it up, interacting, conversing, building relationship, helping that person with the product or service that you're pushing. But, but, but please, please, in 30 days from today, I, I want to see a change. I want, and I'm not going to pop up in your living room and ask, right? But <laughs> I want you in a better position than you're in now. So, like, really, tonight, what, what time are you done? I don't know. But at that time, what I want you to do is I want you to take one hour. This is your homework. Because everybody, I don't see anybody writing this down. Tonight, one hour. One hour. What can you be doing better to get to your goals? And that's not about sales. That's about you, baby. That's about you. What can you be doing better to get to your goals? Now I'm going to piss you off. That's your homework for the rest of your life. Every night, take an hour and look at your day. What can you do better tomorrow? What can you do? Yeah. Look, mm. I, I, I'm trying not to stand up at a pulpit, but uh, look, I, 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 I'm serious. So I was raised by entrepreneurs. Um, my mom ran a card shop here in Philly. My grandfather owned a fish market at 52nd and Haverford. Um, he was my first employer. I asked my grandfather, <laughs> this is hilarious. So I'm 12 years old. I asked my grandfather for $10 because I wanted to go to the toy store. Ex-Air Force vet business owner. He's like, $10. What are you going to do for it? I'm like, huh? I'm, a, I'm, I'm 12. He's like, what are you going to do for it? Um, I, don't, I, I don't know. Like, I'm 12. Come on, man. He's like, okay, well, men work. And let's transcend gender for this conversation. People who want something work for it. If you're not working for it, you're full of it. What are you, a dreamer? Wake up. To dream, you have to be asleep. To dream, you have to be asleep. Wake up. So, Grandpa said, okay, well, you know. What we're going to do is this. You will be at this fish market 7 a.m. on Saturday. Now, everybody with gray hair knows that when we were kids, 7 a.m. was when G.I. Joe was on. Okay? Like, you're killing my cartoon, my Saturday cartoons. But I was there. And Grandpa stood me next to his cash register and told me, when people pay me, ask them if they want you to carry their bags to the car. That was my first business. I was a registered to car delivery service at my grandfather's fish market, right? I went home with about $30 in my pocket that night and grandpa never had to reach in his pocket to pay me. So what did he teach me? It's better to learn how to fish than to ask for a fish is the lesson I learned at the fish market, at the last fish market. The first business lesson I ever learned was learning what you need to learn to achieve what you want to achieve is more precious more valuable, more impactful, more empowering, Woo, baby, than, 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 than anybody handing it to you. Somebody handing it to you, cute. It's been handed to you. Right, right. 
Jason's paying attention. Jason wins the gold watch. All right. Yes, the value in helping bring it full circle. Right. I needed 10 bucks. Grandpa added another value service to his business. Like, this is it. Come on. So, one, every night, every night, take an hour, just relax, no TV for this hour, jazz or classical music, because they stimulate creative thought. Every hour, every night for one hour, what can you do tomorrow better than you did today? How can you be better tomorrow? Right, that's one. Two, develop a sales process for your business. Yes, mid. <laughs> um, develop a sales process. Okay. What what is the flow of traffic from initial awareness to relationship? client relationship what's what's that flow look like for your business right three crm you need one if you don't have budget for one get a hubspot or an excel spreadsheet and i'll tell you um you, you, <laughs> that excel spreadsheet's gonna be a lot of work <laughs> Um, listen, yeah, yeah, those are the, those are the key takeaways. Be your authentic self, be better than you were yesterday. Make sure you understand your sales process. Make sure you are focused on helping and adding value to everybody you touch. That not only lends itself to sales and closing deals, but it lends itself to your integrity and your reputation. All right, my friend, that's a, that, that we just hit that time right on the minute. Like you, like you were prepared and practiced. Oh my gosh. All right. Well, so if you're on the zoom, if you're on Facebook, let's, let's give rich a, a round of applause. It can be virtual. That was outstanding way to go. My friend, uh, what I'm going to do, the conversation here is so good. Uh, so I'm probably, I've not done this before, but I think I'm just going to publish the chat in the blog that I always publish. So in about a week, this, this will be posted on my website. I always add it to YouTube. The video is on Facebook. As soon as we're done, the video publishes to Facebook. If you wanna keep the conversation going, please, by all means, reach out to Rich on LinkedIn, connect with him, connect with each other. I'm putting my email in the chat. I send out a newsletter a couple times a month reminding folks of when this event happens. For the foreseeable future, it looks like we're going to be some version of live. I just had a chat with the physical location where we do business brew uh, normally, and we're trying to figure out how to do this, but I've been contemplating how to do a hybrid the whole time because we have so many people from all across the country joining us today. I want to keep that going. So shoot me an email if you want to be on that newsletter list to get reminders of when this happens. We're also going through the process, or I'm going through the process of turning past episodes into a podcast. So those are available as well on most podcasting platforms. And last but not least, uh, just um, get out there, do what Rich said, and, and have a process and be your authentic self. I want to be mindful of everyone's time. So if you have to go, feel free to sign off. Uh, but I'll keep the Zoom going, but we'll probably end the Facebook Live here. So have a good rest of your morning. And if you have questions for Rich, uh, reach out to him on LinkedIn or stay here on Zoom and ask him on the in the comments. Thanks, everyone, for your time this morning. Yeah, I got another five minutes if you got questions, folks. Just let's go. Fire them off. No questions. All right. Well, you got to give them. The, while, they're, while we're waiting, That's if anybody awesome. has questions, Rich, one of the things that I wanted to say, but you just kept going and I didn't want to interrupt you, was your sales process should also overlap your marketing. So one thing that I do, every lead that comes in, I'm adding them to my newsletter. I'm connecting with them on LinkedIn. People don't think of those as marketing mm -hmm. tasks. They might be big picture business development tasks, 
But if you're not adding those people somehow to keep hearing, because every no, I mean, I, I heard it when I was in sales, I did regular sales for a cable company. Uh, every no gets you that much closer to a yes, right? That's, that's that right. Thing. That's right. But all of those no's, that doesn't mean that's the end of that opportunity. If you right. keep communicating with them, you keep marketing, you keep engaging them, that no might turn into a yes down the road. So your right. process helps you map out that whole thing. What should I do when they say no? What should I do when they say yes? What should I do when they email me? All of those things. True. Um, sales process often, uh, especially at the beginning of the sales process, it always includes marketing. Um, you know, how are you getting leads? Where are the leads coming from? That's that's marketing. Yeah. Man, I wish I could hang out. All right, bro. Love you. I'll see you at Business Cards and Cigars tomorrow. That sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah. So every first Friday, I do an event in South Jersey called Business Cards and Cigars at uh, Belvedere Cigar Lounge. Good opportunity to network, you know. Might have to find myself in Jersey one of these uh, first bro, Fridays. Man. You got to fly out, man. Come on out. We'll get you a cheesesteak. We'll get you an authentic cheesesteak. No Pats and Genos. We'll, we'll take you to the real spot. Uh, Prince is originally from Pittsburgh. He's saying hello to uh, his fellow Keystone State native. Uh, hey, Eagles fan, and you got a terrible towel, but we're still friends. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, on that, we'll wrap it up here on Zoom. Thanks, everyone, for your time. Thanks, Rich, Thanks so everyone. much. Uh, you know, shoot Thanks me an email, me. Josh at Tinderbox.marketing, if you want to stay plugged into these events. And I hope everyone has a wonderful morning and spend an hour, get better today. That's it. Hour All right. a day. All right. Bye, everyone. Have a good one. See you guys later. All right.